All right, here we are in Learning Plan 7, getting near the end of the course. So we're going to be covering Chapter 10, which is Goal Setting. And there's a couple of assignments here, um, a little less intensive than Learning Plan 6. So um, we'll jump right in here. All right, so Goal Setting. Most people think about goals as long-term, short-term goals. Um, and it's difficult, I think, for a lot of people to define what a goal actually is. Um, and then taking the steps to complete that goal. So we always, when we talk about goals, we want them to be uh, measurable, something that's attainable, um, nothing too grandiose, because then it, if it doesn't happen the way we plan it to happen, it can become very defeating very quickly. So when we're working with our clients, setting goals is critical, and we typically do that once we have enough information um, and a clear direction where the client wants to go. We don't want to introduce goals too soon um, because it can really throw things off and if we're the ones introducing the goals to the client that makes it more of a passive um, a passive situation for the client because then we're kind of sitting in the driver's seat saying alright this is what you need to accomplish and this is how you're gonna do it we want the client to come up with the goals and we want the client to come up with the direction and and come up with uh, the methods that they're going to use to complete that goal and we're there to to support them and to help them through that alright so um, some key concepts of course and number two is is I think very important before a goal can set can be set the client must be willing to take responsibility for the problem um, his or her feelings and the goal. So a lot of times clients do focus on um, other environmental situations that don't really um, have an impact on them setting a, a specific goal for themselves. Um, especially when you're working with AODA clients or clients who have been in the criminal justice system quite a bit, uh, a lot of them like to play the victim role and uh, avoid taking responsibility for their own actions or their own emotions and so before we can get to that goal setting process those things need to occur um, because then you're gonna have the best buy-in from the client at that time as well alright constructive goal setting here so you wanna go through that Okay, goals should be stated positively. We don't want uh, negative type goals, um, like something like um, for an AODA client, you will not, I will not consume any alcoholic beverages for one week. Um, you know, try and restate it so that it's a positive focus. Um, I will, I will be abstinent from all mind and mood altering drugs for one week. Um, so you want to make sure that it's something that's attainable and something that is positive as well. It should be simple and concrete, and it should be important to the client. It's not about us. It's not about the helper and the therapist or the counselor creating goals for the client. It's the client. It has to be important to the client. Otherwise, you're you're not going to get the buy-in, and the client's just going to nod their head, yes, yes, I'll I'll do what you say, and then there's no follow through and then you're left scratching your head wondering why this person isn't following your directions after they sat in that chair and told you that they were gonna do uh, you know follow your directions so uh, we wanna make sure that it's up to the client to to have that buy-in we don't wanna work harder than the client if the clients not ready to set goals um, then we're not gonna set goals with them alright so you're gonna read chapter 10 here's the PowerPoint all right, this is really a good attachment here. This is a sample treatment plan that I'm going to pull up here. All right, so in the last learning plan, we looked at um, the intake form or assessment form, and this is a, a sample treatment form or treatment plan. And when we discuss treatment plans, I won't get into a lot about treatment plans, but um, when we talk about treatment plans, we have to have a goal objective and then the methods that we're going to use to complete those that goal or the objective and and the goal okay <clears throat> I in all treatment plans 
especially in the mental health AODA field, you're going to have a, an area where you make your diagnosis and your observation, your observations, um, long-term goals, typically long-term goals are a year or greater, all right, short-term objectives, objectives are a little more specific than goals, goals are more broad and objectives are a little more specific and then you have the interventions or the methods or your strategies and those are very very specific alright so take a look at this it's interesting this is a very short um, treatment plan um, but it's pretty straightforward it's got some good information in it alright and then you also have your journal starter for the week or for this learning plan so make sure you're reviewing the instructions for that. You're going to choose either one, two, or three. One requires at least four paragraphs, two requires at least four paragraphs, and three requires at least four paragraphs. And don't forget to end your journal starter with three good things for the week. All right, so as you can imagine, we're going to be discussing goals with this journal starter. Um, so moving on here to discussion board all right and everyone should be very familiar with this now um, choose a prompt and respond to that make sure you're responding to everyone that responds to your posts make sure you're responding to at least two of your peers um, posts make sure you're you're um, posting throughout the time the learning plan is open and available Make sure you're using the techniques that are outlined in the rubric to, have to add to the dialogue. And make sure you're responding completely to the prompt as well. All right, so that wraps it up for Learning Plan 7, and we're on Chapter 10. So good luck, and I'll see you on Learning Plan 8.